Good morning, church. We're going to take the time together now to worship God, to put Him first, and to get into His Word. And it's a great way to, to set our course for the day, to set our hearts and our minds on the things of God before anything else. Uh, let's do this now. Lord Jesus, we dedicate this day to You. The Bible says every day is from You. So we thank You for today. Even before we know what's going to happen today, we thank You for it because You are with us and You will accompany us. And because of that, Lord, there is reason to, to praise, to worship, to, to go to You. Uh, we ask You to be with us wherever we are uh, as we're watching this. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing this song to God now.
Jesus, thank you for being with us. We ask you to uh, open our hearts and our minds uh, to the scriptures. I ask you, Lord, to check my ability to uh, expound them as well, uh, to do your word justice. In Jesus' name, amen. We're still in the book of Psalms. I hope you're enjoying this. I hope you're seeing the range of expression that is allowed within the Christian faith. And we're going to see some very interesting ones even after this in the next few days. Uh, just some of them are super positive. Parang wala siyang problema. Lord, ang galing mo. Some of them seem super negative. And many of them are somewhere in the middle. And all of that is allowable in the Christian faith because of, not of what we say, but because of who we're saying it to. We're saying it to God. We're saying it with a reference point that God, you are good. God, you're the greatest. Now let me tell you what's going on. And we allow Him to change our hearts as well. Today's psalm is a very interesting one. It's Psalm chapter 71. And the title uh, in my Bible, I don't know what, what your uh, version says, but my, my version says, Forsake me not when my strength is spent. Wow, I love that. And that's a line uh, later on, um, uh, verse 9 in, the, in that psalm. But let me read verse 1 and 2 first. It says, In you, O Lord, do I take my re refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. And the psalm goes on. Uh, and as I was reading this and preparing for this message, if there was one word that um, this psalm, I, I felt it captures the essence of this psalm, it's really dependence on God. It's really, Lord, I need you. Lord, kailangan kita. Lord, wag mo kong iiwanan. Kailangan kita. I need you, Lord, you are my refuge. I need you to deliver me. And I love that. You know, very often when we pray, I don't, I don't know if you have the same tendency that I do sometimes, when we pray, it, I almost feel like it's a performance sometimes. I have to watch myself where my expression to God needs to be polished. You know, my, my attitude has already changed. David doesn't pray like that. David prays to God as he is and then his attitude changes in the prayer because of his dependence to God. And this whole psalm is just saying that over and over again. You, you're, be to me a rock of refuge to which I continually come. Verse 3. His dependence on God is not a one-time thing that I got it, I'm good. No, I continually come to you. I keep having to go back to you because I need you, God. This is a psalm of dependence. I highly recommend that you read it for yourself. Um, uh, who knows, you, you, you know, what you'll get from it will, will, might be even different and in, will enhance and enrich what I'm about to share. But I see this psalm here that there's two, two areas where he says, I continually come to God, I'm continually dependent to you. And he describes two different areas where this continual dependence on God is. And the two areas are, number one, across all ages. This is a dependence on God Across his whole life. Verse 5 and 6 says, For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have leaned from before my birth. You are he who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. Verse 9, Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength is spent. And scholars say that... Uh, um, when David wrote this, even though it's not in the text itself, uh, many, most scholars think it came from David because of the pattern of the writing. But when he wrote this, he, he's, it says he's old already. Do not cast me off in the time of my old age. If you do, jump down to verse 17 to 18, he says, O God, from my youth you have taught me. I still proclaim your wondrous deeds. So even to old age and gray hairs, O God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those to come. And this is the, a prayer of a person who has been following God since youth. And now, he's just still he's old, he's gray hair. So unfortunately, I won't be able to say that. There's a number of us who won't, Pastor Gilbert, uh, Pastor Steve, Pastor Ado. But imagine na lang, no, gray hair. But 
what he's saying is, Lord, I've followed you before. You've delivered me from catastrophe before. And I trust you will do it again today. You know, right now, we're going through a time of catastrophe uh, around the world. And it's impacting people to different degrees. But I think for the most part, all of us, none of us are unaffected by this. And a big part of what's going to get us through is looking back at how God has delivered us before. And remember that. The other day, my wife and I were talking together and, and, and about the journey that God's brought our home through. From different hospitalizations to provision at every turn. And even now, as we look at you know, uh, expenses piling up, it's like you, you get scared, but then you remember what God did. And you're like, He's got this. Many of you need to go back and do that. And take that time and say, Lord, you were there when I was younger. You were there when I knew even less than I know now, and you delivered me. And what about for those people who are relatively new, who maybe this is their first crisis with God together? Look around. Look around spiritual family. That's why you want to be part of a small group. You're there, you see these people who have been walking ahead of you, and you listen to their stories, and it builds up your faith to realize, God's going to do the same thing for me. This psalm is a psalm of dependence across all ages. The second thing that I see here is not just across all ages, but a psalm of dependence amidst all situations. All situations. Verse 10 to 13 says, For my enemies speak concerning me. Those who watch for my life consult together and say, God has forsaken him. Pursue and seize him, for there is none to deliver him. O God, be not far from me. O my God, make haste to help me. May my accusers be put to shame and consumed. With scorn and disgrace, may they be covered who seek my hurt. This is a, a catastrophe that David is in. Um, and, you know, there are a number of possible times in David's life, even in his old age, that, um, you know, problems would come up, accusers would come up. People would think, aha, now is his time to fall. And they would conspire against him together. And here he is praying again. God, we've been through this before. I need you to deliver me again. There's this, this, as I was reflecting on this, it encourages me in a way, but first by discouraging me. It discourages me to think that hindi pala linear ang buhay natin. Because you would think David's problems were like worse when he was starting out. Shepherd boy, fought Goliath, had those problems with Saul, and then he became king, and then tuloy tuloy na, easy sailing. So, and they lived happily ever after. Not really. That wasn't the pattern of his life. He was a shepherd boy, he had some victory, he was anointed king, and then he fought Goliath, he had the victory, then he was falsely accused by Saul, and his life was one of a mix of ups and downs and, 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 and blessings, but also consequences for sin and also stuff he didn't deserve or do for himself that was wrong, but it would still inf affect him. Naka discouraged na isipin na, ay, wala palang guarantee. And see, what I like about this psalm is that it's pointing out to us that God is there the entire time. The promise of Scripture is not put your faith in Jesus and have no more problems whatsoever. No, but God is there amidst all situations. Look at this verse. And actually, I stopped at this verse a bit because I was like, wow, pwede bang sabihin yon? Verse 20, he says, You who have made me see many troubles and calamities will revive me again from the depths of the earth. You will bring me up again. You will increase my greatness and comfort me again. Wow. He's saying God was the one who made him see many calamities. Are we allowed to say that? Can, can we say that? Hey, that's what he's saying. Well, Lord, ultimately, you're in charge, you're sovereign, you, you do this. And see, if we have a, a, a notion of the gospel that God just wants to bless me all the time, then we're going to have a hard time believing this. When the pandemic hits, when, when, when financial reversals hit, when we don't get what we were asking God for or praying for, what happens to the gospel then? And the problem with that isn't that 
it's hindi totoo that God wants to bless you. No, He does want to bless you. But uh, He also promises things besides blessing. In the book, uh, Stop Taking Sides by Pastor Adam Maybe, one of our Every Nation pastors in the U.S. I can't recommend this book enough, especially at this time. Um, he says, it's not this, that this fake gospel, the false good news that God always, only ever wants to bless you, heal you and enrich you by faith is not biblical. It's that it's not biblical enough. Because God doesn't only promise victory, He promises a good deal of suffering too. And then he goes on to describe in the book of John where Jesus says, in this world you will have trouble, you will have suffering, but take heart, I have overcome the world, I have victory over the world. In that chapter, Pastor Adam explains that victory and suffering go hand in hand. And that's what David is doing in this section. He's saying, Lord, you have made me see many calamities, but you will revive me again. From the depths of the earth, you will bring me up again. <laughs> Nakatakot na nakaka-encourage yung again. Kasi ibig sabihin, nangyari na ito dati. At nangyari siya ulit. <laughs> but what's different? He just knows God will do it again. He just knows God's gonna pick him up again. He just knows that God will catch him again. You know, recently, my uh, family and I got to go parang river rafting. Di naman sobrang wild, no? Panakasalbabida lang kami, tapos may mga rapids parts. And I told Philip, Philip, uh, our six-year-old son, you could fall, okay? You could fall. But don't worry, Papa will pick you up. I was really hoping he wouldn't fall, okay? But sure enough, we both fell in and he fell and uh, he almost bashed his head on the rock and he was, he was underwater and I pulled him up right away. And I didn't want him to be traumatized, so I held him close and I said, Philip, Philip, were you scared? And he said, Papa, you saved me. And I said, yes. Were you scared? And he said, no. And he said, you told me you will pull me up again. You will pull me up. I just think of that image. There will be times that pain and suffering will overwhelm us. And I pray, like David, we'll be able to say, you have made me see many troubles and calamities. We've been here before, but you will revive me again. From the depths of the earth, you will bring me up again. Psalm 71. Dependence of God, on God. Across all ages, amidst all situations. In victory and in suffering, we don't let the circumstance determine, how, uh, uh, determine what we believe about God. Because we know He is close in all circumstances. <sighs> I hope that encourages you. I don't know what your day is going to be like. Maybe it's going to be amazing. Maybe it's going to be painful. But know that God is there. And He invites us to be dependent on Him, to acknowledge our dependence on Him the entire time. Kaya nga tayo nagde-devotions ng ganito eh. Kasi kaysa matulog, kaysa mag-phone, kaysa mag-TV series, the Lord, eto ang kailangan ko. I'm dependent on you. Let's pray. And then we're going to sing that song again. Lord Jesus, thank you. Uh, how freeing it is to know that we can lean on you. And how silly we must be <laughs> to, to keep trying to carry things on our own strength, to, to bear it on our own and say, Lord, look what I'm doing, look what I'm doing. And yet you're saying, lean, lean on me, come to me, put down that burden. Lord, I pray for those of us, God, who, who are new in the faith, Lord, that you will strengthen our faith by hearing testimonies of other believers around us to say, okay, God, you've been there for them, you will be here for me. And Lord, I pray for those of us, Lord, who are older, who have gone through these trials before, and know that you are faithful. Remind us again, Lord, of how you have been in the past. Bring that back to mind so when we face the current problems, we can say, wait, wait, wait. I have been overwhelmed before. I have been buried before. I have been maligned before. I have had rever I've made mistakes before, but God has always brought me out again. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. And this is why we praise you. We praise you, Lord even in difficult situations, because you are always there. In Jesus' name, 
why don't we sing this song to God now as a confession that He is still here. Jesus, thank you that you will never leave us nor forsake us. We claim that promise that yes, in this world there will be trouble, but we can take heart, we can have courage because you have overcome the world. You have the ultimate victory over the world. So whatever we face today, Lord, it will not triumph over all. It will not triumph ultimately. You have that victory and you are with us. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day. And whatever you're doing today, be dependent on Jesus. Acknowledge Him. Even in the middle of the day, five minutes, ten minutes, cry out to Him. It's amazing how that will change your day. See you tomorrow.